Perfect. All right. So it is two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And so uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, our wonderful managing brokers, Dee and Kathy, are going to be presenting today on managing a listing, day one to closing. What does that progression, what does that journey look like? And um, what advice um, and expertise can they offer us today? So um, I'm going to pass it over to them. And uh, the floor is yours, you guys. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I got it. I got you know, it. Before, so. we, before we get started, uh, you know, I'd just like to know what everyone's pain points are when it comes to managing their listings. I think the hardest pain point is getting it. <laughs> oh, I'm with you, of course. That's the, that's the hardest part of the journey it's is starting, getting it. It's starting to open up, but it's still very slim. Okay. It's hard to find them in your in one's area. Got it. Kathy and I are going to have a Q and A at the end of this, so we can talk about that a bit. Um, and give some tips. I've got some ideas around kind of what we can do in a market like this to get a listing. Um. But you got to be bold and daring. So here we go. Anybody else have anything they want to add before we actually kick this off? I think um, I will. I would hi, have to. Hi, I would have to say it's the uh, working through uh, with the sellers, listing the price, good a good listing price, and uh, and working with through them and helping them understand what it's going to take to sell it, but also staying, when you say in charge, meaning giving them all the options and and, and keeping them on the path of um, reality. Okay, got it. Kind of stuttered there, but, but really helping them understand all the things that have happened and are happening, and then keeping them in a realistic space for them to actually sell it. Uh, I got it. So I, I will tell you this, if we have enough time at the end, we'll talk about the power okay. of the no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Yes, Kathy, that's exactly yeah. right. I'm going to touch on managing expectations as well in this presentation, and I think that is key, and that's what uh, Joy was saying. Um, so our goals for this presentation, basically to equip you with a clear understanding of activities between the listing agreement and closing. I know many of you have had listings before, so this is very sort of basic, but I want you to know that, it, you know, I think you'll be able to take at least one key piece out of this, you know, 40 minute presentation that you can start using right away. Um, I want to provide actual actionable tips um, and steps for effective marketing and property presentation and client communication. And then I also, we want you to be motivated with the tips and the success strategies that we're going to present here today. Um, so first step, of course, prepping for success. It's all about the prepping and the and the uh, the the forework that you do. So basically, you want to review your listing agreement. Definitely have the key terms and the commission and the communication protocols. Those are the key things that you want to have on that listing agreement. You want hey, to Kat, yes. I mean, when you say the communication protocols. Oh yeah, communication protocols. Meaning, how does your seller want to communicate with you? How? often does your seller expect to hear from you? These are key things that you need to discuss and have solidified on day one, because that's going to, you know, work with you for the rest of the escrow period and then beyond. Is that what you... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. How, how do we communicate with one? Yes. You know, part of the thing when we talk about business, both now and in the future, is always centered around communication. Um, and that if, you know, as Kathy said, if we are not letting our sellers know what the cadence looks like of I'm going to contact you on Wednesday, you can expect to hear from me every Friday with an update, good and bad, all those things then you're already running afoul of the seller because we know that sellers are nervous Nellies or nervous Neds, right? Yes. They get frustrated right away because they may not see the activity they're hoping to see, or in a case like the market that we're in, they see more activity than they know what to do with. And so then they have a difficult time trying to navigate, you know, I got this one that's $50,000 over, those kinds of things. So great point, Kathy. Absolutely. Also, part of communication can be 
other touch points like the automatic report that they're going to want to get from say Zillow or realtor.com things like that can can help them feel like they're having more communication with you so um gather property information so you want to be prepared before you sit down you know and have this conversation with the list with the potential seller you want to find out exactly what you know already about that property what you can find out from the tax records um, to just prepare yourself for the documents that you might need to bring um, discuss staging and minor improvements um, these are things now this is a little tip from 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 me Discuss, so when you're discussing like staging and minor improvements suggestions that you have based on your expertise and knowledge, I would say reserve most of that until you have the listing agreement signed. You don't want to give away the farm, right? So you can hint that you will help them with staging and minor improvements and, and telling them what other buyers are expecting in that market, but I wouldn't give it all out without first getting that listing agreement signed. Um, and a quick way that you can do that is yeah. what's called assumptive language, assuming the close. Uh, so, Kathy, you know, um, after we sign our listing agreement, I'm going to go over a few staging tips with you to make the house more presentable for sale. Um, that way we can get the most money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. The idea is also to maximize the appeal, to maximize the home's appeal to the current buyer. <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily mean upgrading all of these things. I mean, you just wanna make sure that it can get sold for the most money. Like that's basically what you're doing. And <clears throat> so Radius actually has partnered with a couple of different vendors who can help with this. One is called Zoom Casa, and another one is Curbio. And um, this is these are both ways to improve the property before listing. And then there's different there's different terms and conditions with both of them, but basically, the seller isn't going to be paying up front for these things. So it, it's great for a seller who doesn't have a lot of money um, to outspend just for selling the house, but they will have some equity that they can during the process of selling, so that they're not going to be owing anything. Um, so if you had any questions about Zoom Casa or Curbio, you can talk to the agent success management team on that. Marketing powerhouse, the next step, of course, you craft a compelling description. So you want to showcase the features of the home and the benefits and, you know, basically what makes this house stand out from the rest? Why is this house, you know, great? Um, you don't want to uh, obviously, you don't want to embellish too much. You want to have it realistic, but you also want it to be compelling and have that language um, draw people in and be attracted to just look at look at the property more or even go have a showing. Like you want them to to um, to come to the listing. So what I would suggest, this is a new tool for you to use for this particular purpose. You should try Chat GPT or Google's Gemini or one of the AI tools. This is really great because you can put in the key parts, um, key features that you want in that description. You can say, you know, this is 50 words. You can, you know, the prompt can be very complete and accurate to your property that you're about to list. And then it can come up with, with a creative description. So Absolutely. I would recommend you trying it out. 100% agree. I will say this, you know what side of the house I always sit on, Kathy. So, yeah. you know, as you're doing that, chat GPT is not perfect. It is damn near perfect, but it is not perfect. So you want to make sure that in your description that you're not saying things that are not true. Um, you know, litigation happens yes. regularly around these kinds of things. So make sure you're not, if it's a waterfront, you know, make sure that it's, uh, you know, it's accurately described that it is truly a waterfront, not 16 blocks from the beach, um, things like that. Exactly. That's yeah. such a, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Waterfront. Yeah. Um, so you have to be realistic. Obviously, you don't want to surprise a buyer. And, um, and I'll touch on that too with the photos, because a lot of times these new features like um, uh, box brownie, I mean, I don't know how new that is, but like in the last 10 years, there's been a bunch of different, um, um, what is it, um, 
augmented reality. Augmented. Yes, yeah. augmented reality, the AR tools that you can use to stage a room or this and that. You want to make sure that the room doesn't look so awesome that when they show up to actually see the, the house and see the listing, that they're shocked and disgusted and run. Like that's the opposite. You do not want that. You want it to be as realistic as possible, but yet presenting the best light. You know? And you guys know that with augmented reality, you also have to put a picture of the actual um, room itself and what it could look like. So you can't use right. mm -hmm. augmented reality photos in place of the real thing. Um, you've got to put this is what a rendering of this is what it could look like. This is what it looks like. There is a new tool, however, that um, most MLSs and um, NAR are going to allow so we'll keep you posted on that but there is a tool to where to kathy's point it is so lifelike so hyper realistic that it's subtle touches like drapes and things like that but it doesn't really change the character of the room so um nar is actually exploring the efficacy of this particular product right now so we should see it in the next 30 to 45 days or so oh that's awesome yeah. yeah that's really great um and Every single MLS has a rule and regulation around photos and what's available, what's allowed and what's not allowed. So I would definitely check with your MLS to make sure that you're adhering to those rules. Um, the virtual tour, doing a virtual tour is, I would consider essential now. Um, it used to be like a add on a benefit, like an extra, but now I think it's pretty much certain you need to put that in there. It's an immersive experience for potential buyers. So, you know, this is great because you don't need to show the house to someone who isn't really interested, right? Like they're just gonna kick the tires. It's, you know, um, a looky-loo that you don't wanna do that. So the virtual tour will help sort of mitigate some of that so that they can have that first, uh, first look. Um, then of course the MLS listing, it has to be, um, it has to be accurate. It has to be, you know, complete. Um, you want to make sure the information is there. The pictures are up on launch day. Hey, Kath. Um, yes. How many pictures do you need on launch day? On launch day? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the MLS. I would but say. Most, most MLSs require what? Five. One. So just one. One, one photo on launch day, guys. Sometimes um, the uh, your you may have a professional photographer that's going to come and do the house at the end of the week, but you want to get the house on the market right away. Most MLSs require at least one exterior photo in order to make your listing live. So keep that in mind, guys. Yes. Yes. I guess it's case by case. I mean, I prefer to have everything up on day one because day one is when you get the most um, hits, the most looks. So you want to make sure you're the biggest bang, right? So if at all possible, have your lit pro listing photos done. Um, the yard sign and the lockbox, you actually, you have to have that ready. Everything needs to be ready to go um, for, for day one. So here you go. Examples of bad listing photos. This one on the left looks like it was an iPhone or phone camera photo blurry, pixelated, that's not gonna work. Um, this middle one, of course, just photos with any clutter or dirty dishes. It's terrible. Any um, of you guys ever see that? Yes. Ate them terrible. all the time, right? It's terrible. I showed up one time for an open to host an open house and the seller left the kitchen like he had just cooked a huge like brunch for people and it was disgusting. So Did I took the I cleaned it. I cleaned oh, the whole no. kitchen. And I was like, because I mean, it was the, it was like an, a luxury house. I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was like my, a high end house. Totally disgusting. Anyway. My pet peeve is always the bathroom. So you'll go oh, in yes. and they'll, they'll have towels that are hanging over the shower <laughs> bar and, you know, uh, soap caked in the sink, those kinds of things. You're like, no, this is not it. <laughs> no, this isn't going to work. <clears throat> this one on the right is if you had like a fisheye lens and it was just kind of distorted and it looks weird, like that's just not working. Gonna be, it's not appealing. It's unappealing. Um, photos that are taken at night with poor lighting, uh, photos that are zoomed in too close, 
um, or ones that are poorly composed, like off center, just a little odd. You just, I mean, you just have to have, you know, you don't have to have professional photos if you're a great photographer, but you have to make sure that the photos represent the house in the best way. And let's be honest, guys, none of you are photographers for a living. It's <laughs> always the best option to hire a photographer, right? It's two, yes. three hundred bucks. Sometimes it's more, but you're going to get a better return on your investment if you're treating your business like a business, which is, you know, doing it professionally, right? I feel like that's that's money well spent. Absolutely. Okay, here's an example of a great listing photo. Now, this photo that I cut and pasted isn't as clear as I'd want it to be. It should be clear, right? Um, but just the elements are there. So bright and airy, the photographer utilized natural light and it, the room appears spacious and inviting. Um, balanced composition. You can see the lamp and the plant. Um, it's pleasing to see, to look at. The colors are good. Um, it's it's staged. There's It's free of clutter. The items on the couch and the table, they're nicely placed. I mean, it's pleasing to the eye, right? And it's it should be a high quality image. I know this cut and paste wasn't great, but um, it should be sharp and clear um, with good resolution and minimal you know, noise. Um, and then multiple angles to show different areas, like showcase different areas of the room to give a well-rounded picture of like, say the great room or the living room, it's key to do it there and target it to your, to the audience basically. Um, and then have some professional editing if you can do some professional editing without being unrealistic. So say there was just a little bit of a lighting issue, you can fix that. Okay, next step, the buyers are showing up. The listing's on them in the MLS. It's live. You're getting a lot of activity on your listings. So show me the buyers, right? Schedule and conduct showings. So be available and follow up after the showings, after every showing. And give that feedback. You can give it to the, you know, if the seller needs, again, you've decided this in the at the listing agreement, right? Do they want feedback immediately or do they want feedback in clumps? You know, like every couple of days, give me the feedback from the last two days. You'll decide that so they, they know. Um, strategic open houses, you want to generate interest and have a wider audience. So definitely do strategic open houses and absolutely, you know, provide planning time. So make sure you're doing marketing for those open houses and not just putting it in the MLS like the day before and hope for the best. Do you guys want a great tip on how you can get a yes. buyer every time at an open house? <laughs> First of all, I want to hear all the no's. <laughs> oh, I guess everybody wants a great tip, huh? Kathy, check your Slack. Um, so a, a great way of getting open houses. So let me see if this sounds familiar to all of you. What, how does a standard open house run, right? You show up, you put your signs out, you put some flyers in the box outside, and then you uh, go inside and you've got a flyer box inside with your business cards and a login book and all the above. Does that sound familiar to everybody? Is that typically how you guys see open houses run? So what does that scenario remove right away? Or more specifically, who does it remove? It removes the realtor, right? Most people are coming in, they're already slightly uncomfortable. They're meeting a stranger for the first time. They walk into the open house, they look for the flyer and they avoid you, the realtor. The best way to get a client every time at an open house, and your seller's gonna love you for this, is remove all of that, right? That forces them to have to interact with you as the agent and you're basically like a tour guide like disneyland hello mr and mrs buyer my name is kathy arzad i'm with xyz realty what you're looking at today is a four bedroom three bath house blah 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 and then you give them a description now they're dependent on you for information about the property at least more data from the property and then you give them one action item which is Something like, you know, the seller's really done great work in the kitchen on your way out. If you could stop and give me some feedback, it goes a long way with my seller, right? 
now you can start to ask questions about how they felt about the property. Well, listen, I've got some other properties. If this doesn't work for you, let me get your name and let me get your number. I'll call you. As you can see, I'm working right now. The thing about the book, and I think Kathy will agree with this, is that we've all seen bogus names in the book. Mickey Mouse, five, 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 one, two, three, four, right? Because it's just a way of forcing exercise of people actually getting information um, in the book. Um, so you want to you want to make sure that you're engaging with them. And that's a clear way of you actually taking away a customer because now you've told them, I may have something else that'll help you out too. But either way, you're getting a direct feedback on the property almost immediately. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, leverage your network. So reach out, send the listing, the new listing to everyone, your past clients, your sphere of influence, other agents. I mean, really just push it out to all the channels because you never know where the buyer is actually going to be. Social media, of course, and online ads. So you want to do some targeted campaigns for maximum reach with these. So as far as social media, I mean, Facebook is good for targeted ads. Um, Instagram is good for targeted ads. Um, online ads, I could say, you know, we could talk about those. Does anyone have one that they work with right now that works great? When you so, say online ads, are you talking about, uh, like, can I have an example? Do you mean, like, I do ads with horseproperties.net um, is one. Is that what you mean? Um, something like, um, there's some products like ad, there's AdWorks. Okay. Okay. The yeah. Google ad. I don't know if you'd want to do a Google yeah. ad. No, I haven't done those. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I guess you could work with online ads based on your targeted audience. Right. So what I've seen before is like a, say you have this, you know, uh, this incredible ranch listing that's mm -hmm. going to have a very specific buyer, you know, someone right. who likes horses, someone who likes ranching, um, that type of thing. You can go to maybe a publication, an online publication where mm -hmm. those people, those people are. Um, and put the ad in there because you know it's going to be a special property for a special buyer. So that's when you get creative with your advertising and make sure they can, you know, the exposure is there. Make sure the awareness is there of this, this special property that there aren't, you know, thousands of them on the market. So, right. Oh, that's what I would think. Okay. Cool. Now we're up to negotiation and you can be the negotiation champion here. So you guide your seller through the offers that come in. So I suggest, you know, creating a net sheet for each offer offer so that the seller can truly see what they're going to bring in. So say you're bringing in multiple offers and they look very similar, but since you, you are the expert, you know that this certain loan package, you know, requires this and this and this. So you can kind of draw up a, chart of pros and cons to help your seller. You're the consultant here. Um, you want to explain the process too. Um, don't assume that the seller knows everything about the real estate process. Just explain it in basic terms and then you'll find out you know, what they want. But it's nice to even someone who's bought and sold houses over and over in the past, they're going to want to understand your process. So still explain the process. Um, answer any questions they have, then present the counter offers. Um, of course, advocate for the best, the best price um, and terms. And ultimately, you know that you're not going to be buying or selling this house. You, the seller and the buyer will determine it. So you're just sitting back as the consultant and making sure that flows as a win-win. Transparency and communication. Of course, we're back to that. The communication protocols keep the seller informed and involved in every step of the way here. Um, and then manage expectations. 
this is what you were talking about joy right definitely set the stage up front so if this if this seller is going to take a va the va offer you know they have a heart um a space in their heart for for veterans and their families and they just really want to take this va offer and not another offer that may have come in um help them manage the expectations by explaining how does it work with a va buyer what what can you expect for this and then don't be nervous because I'm here the whole way. Just give them reassurance, you know, this is going to work. Okay, I put it again, manage expectations because it's key here. You're going through the escrow period. Now you've signed the contract um, and you're, you're under contract, you're pending. You're pending, you're the listing agent. You are basically the one who's trying to keep everything together. Um, you ensure both parties withhold the contract due dates and deliverables. At first, I wrote ensure the buyer withholds the contract due dates, but no, you also have to make sure your seller, you know, does it too. Um, there's plenty of things that the seller needs to come up, come in on um, and help them navigate through the inspection period. Again, giving them, I, you know, just a, a, some idea of what to expect here when the inspection comes in, give them perspective. So don't let, don't let a, a, um, a list of just a bunch of little stuff get in the way of the seller's, you know, satisfaction here. Just un understand, put in perspective. Well, this might be like $500 worth of work. I suggest we go for it. Something like that, you know, just putting it in perspective. Um, preparing for the appraisal so provided this will be getting an appraisal if it's um if it's a lender uh involved then you're going to have an appraiser and you can prepare for that appraisal meaning that say we're back to that special listing property that i was just talking about it's you know it's a it's a ranch where you can have horses and, and animals and there's already some pens and all this kind of stuff there it's a special property you want to make sure that you're helping the appraisal. You can make, well, D, you can speak, you can interrupt me here, but but you can, you can, without getting into trouble, just share some, some comparatives, share some features. You can have a little sort of booklet that the appraiser can look at. Now, granted, the appraiser is going to do his own research, but it doesn't hurt to kind of lay the groundwork of the research you've already done. This is the property. This is what makes it special. This property is not your standard because of all of the green features, all of these things like, you know, make it easy for the appraiser to to do his job. Yeah, that's like probably the best statement. Make it easy for the appraiser to do their job. Yes, Absolutely. I was rolling around that. Yeah, <laughs> you got there. <laughs> yeah. So and also, you know, if it's a if it's a if it's a type of market that you're in that you happen to know the list of appraisers you know you will kind of know this appraiser is is uh this way or this way you just have an idea so you can also just prepare your seller you know this appraiser was was picked it's completely random blah 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 so anyway um become familiar with the other party's lender and title agent right because if you're the seller you're not going to um necessarily have chosen those things so it's important for you to meet those people And we are at closing. This is the best day, right? We're closing the deal. Um, assist the closing agent if needed, as needed with preparing closing documents. I mean, as, you know, assuming things were pretty smooth here, it's not gonna be that much um, that you're gonna have to be assisting here, but there could be the title agent could come, up, come to you and need your seller to step in and, and provide some documentation, et cetera. So you can assist by just being, you know, just being the liaison there with the seller and then address any last minute issues. So that could be if something came up during the um, final walkthrough. I mean, you are you are really in in it from day one to closing. You have to assist your seller with everything and making sure that the deal closes. Do you have anything you want to add there, Dee? Um, no. Okay, okay. Client satisfaction. So 
maintain communication throughout the whole process, giving updates, addressing concerns. That will definitely lead to a happy seller. Celebrate the success. So show your appreciation and build a long-term relationship by a kind gesture or giving a closing gift. Something that you know that you think the seller would like. Now, if they're moving across the country, you're not going to give them this huge gift. That's just they're going to need to pack it. But you know, something. I've heard of some agents, you know, helping um, providing like a um, providing a moving truck. You know, like just a if it's an in-house move. I mean, an in-town move, something like that. That could be very useful, and a seller remembers that. Um, Treat the client, even if this is the first time you're working with them, treat them as a repeat customer already. And that'll reap, you'll reap the benefits there. And this is a slide about how we at Radius support you. So DNI managing brokers that can help you with um, deal doctoring, that can help you if issues arise and you need to, you know, uh, get through it. Um, something that I've always said about realtors is that we're problem solvers, you know, we are the source of the source. We can figure things out and get things moving. Um, your ASM team, the agent success managers. So at Radius, you all have an agent success management team and they can help you navigate um, with like the Radius partnerships like Curbio or Zoom Casa. Um, we have compliance auditors that look at your file and help you um, with the complete transaction file. And um, and also I recommend it, it's easy and great to have a transaction coordinator. It's really beneficial, so I recommend that. And we have a list of outside preferred TCs if you need that. Any questions or comments? Thank you, it was good. Thank you, Joy. That was Appreciate great. It. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Karina. Yeah, it was great. Very informative. Thank you. Have this a will blessed be, day. Yeah, you too. Um, so we will record this and put this on our Radius website so you can, so everyone can see it in the future. Um, and please reach out to DRI if you need anything.